Hello, everybody. My name is Jim St. Pierre. I'm one of the um, Maine Humanities Teacher Leader Fellows, and I'd like to talk to you today about uh, media literacy and visual literacy as part of that. Um, so we have a brief presentation, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on uh, where discussion sort of leads. Uh, so I want to start with that. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen with you. I do have materials that I'll post to the humanities website as well and uh, on some future newsletters. Um, and um, and then you feel free to get in touch with me or Dory Tripp, my uh, associate who works as well as a humanities teacher leader fellow. Um, so we're going to review some techniques and resources for teaching media literacy in all different levels of classrooms. Uh, although I am primarily a high school teacher, my wife has taught at the elementary level for over 20 years. And um, so, excuse me, uh, and Dory too has, is a teacher at the elementary level. So um, we have quite a few uh, voices coming into our development of, um, you know, this um, presentation. And so, uh, just to give you some ideas of um, what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to um, just briefly cover the importance of media literacy and why uh, it should be really a part of just about every school's curriculum. We're going to review some resources and techniques for the elementary grades, same for the middle grades, for the upper grades. And then we're going to do some towards the end about visual literacy. And I think we, um, the tail end of this, will deal with some sample lessons that uh, people can incorporate or adapt for their own classrooms. So just to get to the um, importance of media literacy, um, here are some passages from a lot of the different resources that we have listed here. And some of these we're gonna come back to as well. So um, I, I think it goes out saying that our students are consumers of media unlike anything in prior generations, right? Kids are growing up with screens in front of them almost from the day they're born until, you know, well, we'll see where it goes from here. And uh, being literate in the media age requires critical thinking that empower us as we make decisions, whether in the classroom, the living room, the workplace, the boardroom, or the voting booth, right? So it's important that everybody not just be um, uh, consumers, but literate consumers of media so that they can make a decision about what information is correct and truthful and appropriate. And then, of course, media literacy empowers students to ask questions and make judgments based on evidence and prov provides them with skills they need to become smart consumers and creators of digital media. So um, there's a, a couple of resources we're going to touch on as we go through this. Um, uh, but uh, before we get to those, I wanted to review uh, sort of this chart that details the different ways that people consume or what they call prosume media, right? And so on the left here, we have just functional consuming, which is what a lot of people do, right? They just take it in, they understand it, and they they don't really evaluate it or analyze it or, um, or critique it. And so that's what we're trying to get, to be from functional consuming to critical consuming so that they can, you know, our students and, and people in general as adults uh, can be more critical about the media that they're taking in and they can start to evaluate um, how truthful and, and just how important it is. Excuse me. The, um, the other part of this, of course, is prosuming, which is the creation of media, right? And the distribution and um, whether or not we're creating it with a critical eye or creating it just to be, just to participate in social media. You know, why are we uh, creating this media and what's its intent? And uh, so what sort of uh, criteria do we bring to our own creation of media? That's an aspect of media literacy as well that people should be familiar with. Um, media literacy and critical thinking, um, to further our discussion, um, is often explored in Edutopia, which is a great resource um, very practical resource if you're not familiar with it. It's an online subscription and they will just send you newsletters. You don't have to pay for it. Right? Um, so there's a linked article here from uh, Edutopia about why teaching media literacy is essential, right? And so they go over a couple of reasons um, uh, and they give you some examples here as well about why it's, uh, it's a significant part. Uh, it should be a significant part. And they actually give you some lessons, some ways of approaching media, teach, teaching media literacy in your classroom. So that's a fairly interesting article that also has some um, uh, 
uh, valuable practical content as well. Um, and here's another one. This is a bit more um, research-based article. It takes a second to load um, from Scientific American about uh, how uh, we should be teaching media literacy in the elementary schools, right? And helping students distinguish fake from real news, um, give them a benefit across their lives. And so it takes you through um, a more, it's a more sophisticated article here. I think there was a part of this that I wanted to find out. Maybe not. Um, and anyway, uh, another more sophisticated um, uh, piece of literature that explores the issue as well. And then to get to the next one, um, why is media literacy in elementary school um, important? And what are ways of uh, bringing that to students, right? Why, what's another way to bring a media literate bring literacy to very young students, like we're talking kindergartners, uh, first grade, second grade. So we can't deal with the same questions that you could say with a middle school or, or a high schooler because they're still now just starting to understand the world. So we want to base it on what they understand, which is often language, emotions, uh, you know, expressions. So one way to begin fostering media literacy in young students is through exploring the power of words. This offers ways for children to evaluate language. So they have this ability. It's easy to build basic media literacy skills because you can use their understanding of expressions and feelings and emotions and language and use that a jumping off place about how to evaluate things and how to evaluate the information that they're gathering from the world around them. My wife particularly likes Jory John's The Bad Seed. She reads that with her kindergartners and it helps them to understand, you know, how their what they do and how they react to the world has meaning. It's powerful and they can be an important part of accepting, understanding people and the world around them. She also, my wife likes the, my mouth is a volcano and, um, and the very inappropriate word. Right? So, um, this very inappropriate world might be for little older kids, first, second grade. My mouth is a volcano works well though with the kindergartners. Um, and here's some, um, for perhaps older kids at the elementary level, um, they're getting exposed to media at a very early age and it helps them identify a variety of ways they receive media so they can start to understand how things are being, information is being presented to them and then how they can question it, right? Um, and it begins to build an awareness of the fact that people are, are, are giving them information and that they just can't be passive about it. Um, so here's... Um, a, a brief video, get my picture out of the way. Got so much going on here that things are pausing. Um, looks like it might be a little bit going on here. Um, Nevertheless, this video deals with uh, five essential media literacy questions, and we'll get into some a little bit later as well. But um, so these are some good resources that you can use as well. And uh, this down here for probably older kids, media wise, what is the nature of media? Uh, and uh, what does it mean for students? So this from our friends, get questions from our family, we hear answers from our teachers, we hear news on the radio or the internet. And so it's in a kid's voice, which is appealing as well. And it goes over very basic um, avenues of information, and ways that media is delivered that students can identify and connect with. Let's see if this one appears. Here are five questions to have kids ask anytime they're viewing media. Number one, who created the message? Help kids pull back the curtain and see that all media has an author and an agenda. Number two, why was the message made? Was it to inform us, to entertain, or persuade? Also, have kids consider the intended audience. Number three, who's paying for it? Help them follow the money and think about the motives behind the message. What else does the funder do? Show kids how to dig for this info. Number four, how is the message trying to get my attention? Show kids how all types of media, from videos to apps and beyond, use different techniques to keep us engaged. And number five, who's represented in the message and who's missing? Whose points of views and values are included? And what can this tell us about the media? To right, and it goes on to a, a few more details about it. Uh, and some of those questions may be too sophisticated 
sophisticated for really young kids, but I think you can bring some of all of them uh, as they get older and sort of build on an understanding of the media and, <clears throat> and just getting students to start questioning things and not just accepting things passively, right? We want them to be active consumers, not passive consumers of the media. Um, here's a few other resources. Um, here's a great one as well from the National Association of Media Literacy Education, NAMLE, N-A-M-L-E. And um, they have a tremendous number of resources for all age from, from kindergarten all the way through college. Um, but here's a good one for the lower grades and middle school, I think. These are, these are what they call medium monsters, right? And so they sort of classify them in ways that students can connect to and, and engage, right? And so we have the, um, the rowdiest repeater around the gossiper, the person that just spreads information. And they get, and this gives you a little lesson, right? The headline hellion, uh, they call him, they call him, and um, they give you questions, they do some role playing, and they do some ways that students can try um, to combat or to, um, to en engage this information in their own lives. Right. And goes on to um, wide-eyed, easily duped giant of the web, the gullible giant, right? And so a lot of what um, students are are often passive consumers of media, and this helps them become more active. And so it's the same thing, way, things they can ask themselves, some role-playing they can engage in, and then way, things they, they can try writing in class if you can present them with some appropriate media. And they go on with a few more monsters, such as the scary Sherry and the... Um, goblin, goblin, um, and uh, similar types of monsters. Good for middle schoolers as well, I think. And here's an interactive lessons and activities for all students in the digital citizenship curriculum. And this is an organization that's trying to push um, for media literacy across all schools and, and all grades. Um, not, they're not they're they're promoting it. They're not being aggressive about it, but um, they give you a lot of different things that you can work with here, right? Apps and websites, tips and resources, professional development, family resources, right? Um, they have links here for the grades K to 12, meet the digital citizens, kindergarten, first grade. They have um, bits of information and and, and links for all different grades, third grade, fourth grade. Uh, and so it's a whole curriculum that they can develop. And you can adapt the whole thing or you can just go through and, and pick bits and pieces as they work into your, your own um, teaching agenda and curriculum. But really powerful and comprehensive curriculum development for media. So that's called the, the digital citizenship curriculum. Uh, um, another way to start, too, which is free, is the Maine Department of Education's Moose module, which is Maine, um, uh, Maine online, um, so, um, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's, it's uh, modules that are created by teachers in Maine uh, for um, a, a adoption in the classroom. And their units are only meant to be two to three weeks long. You can take parts of them, you can do the whole thing. But uh, the best way really to start with elementary students is through things they can certainly connect to, in this case, in this case, pre-K to second, which is feelings and expressions. Students learn, kids learn, we all learn expressions when we're very, very young, I mean, as a baby. And so bringing, uh, you know, helping students understand what it means to evaluate an expression and how they're already doing that helps them to do that with other things as they start to progress to the grades. Uh, there's another great resource, the main Media Education Lab um, has a host of useful resources as well for all grades, um, but uh, for lower grades as well, you can take some of their information and some of their content and work with. They also are having a an ed forum, I think in January. Um, so you can take courses here, you can, um, uh, you know, enlist in and take advantage of their videos and pause podcasts. Um, they have different events that you can, you can engage in. They have teaching resources like Deconstructing Disney, Media Literacy in Action, um, which is a, a, a handbook, right? A literacy textbook. Um, how to understand copyright, courageous conversations, how to talk about difficult topics, right? So they have quite a few um, resources here that you can look through so at many different levels. Some is research-based and some is, you know, um, curriculum-based. 
All right. So uh, moving on to media and literacy grades, and there's often an overlap, right, between the elementary grades and the but so often in the middle grades, they get overlooked. But there are some resources appropriate for that grade level. And one thing you really want to start considering is, um, is presenting to the students what media literacy is, why it's important to be media literate. Um, because at this point, they'll be 11, 12 years old by the time they're in most middle schools. And they'll have had how many years of exposure to media by that point. Um, and so there's a lot of questions here. You can adopt some of them. You can adopt all of them if you're trying to create a sense of media literacy in your classrooms. Um, who created this message? What did they hope to accomplish? How do I interpret this message? Why was this message sent? What lifestyles and viewpoints are represented? So these are all really important questions that students can take uh, with them when they evaluate any sort of media that they're engaged in. And then of course, um, media literacy is explored in this brief video and help students to sort of, uh, you know, give a definite um, perspective on media literacy. Media literacy is not only the ability to understand information being presented to us, but also determining the best way to respond to it. When we say media, we're speaking about the way people communicate around the world, whether it is through print, radio, and television, the internet, or new forms of media. For the past century, mass media has been produced by corporations or state entities that control the content of messages. Um, and so uh, you can certainly review it um, through the resources if you're more interested in it. But, uh, you know, a lot of this content we as adults may be familiar with. But it's good for students to have this as well because they're just being fed media without really um, understanding who's, who's creating it and what the purpose is. So a great place to start, uh, especially in the middle school, is with political cartoons. And you can go through and talk to them. Okay, what is it that's being um, conveyed here? Who's who's creating it? To what end? You know, they obviously have political cartoons that have very distinct purposes and, and political functions. And um, you can find a lot of them at the Library of Congress archives. There's a huge amount of information at this resource that you can use. And... Um, And so you can see uh, all these cartoon drawings and you can actually put in a search for them and, and, um, and you can list and you can, and you can find a list of them and then adapt them for whatever class you want. So I just clicked on this, this one that I have, but uh, you can go to the archives and find just about anything you want. They're very um, comprehensive and uh, there's lots of other images as well that you can draw from because let's face it, any kind of image you're given as a, as a bias, right? There's a person who's taken it, there's um, people who are viewing it, there's a huge amount of information that needs to be questioned and any kind of image. It's not just um, it's not just somebody presenting a sunset, right? It's perspective, it's technology that's taken, there's a lot of other things going on with it. <clears throat> One book that is, I think, appropriate uh, and can be accessible to middle grades is called The He-Man Effect, How uh, Mass Media Sold You Your Childhood um, by Box Brown. And he's an, um, a rising star in the independent comics world, uh, although I think he's become more mainstream recently. And he does a lot of not His art is very accessible, and very simple. Um, and students can really, um, and, he, and he's great at uh, telling the story, not through the, just the words, but through the images as well, uh, which is a powerful way for students to understand the story. It's laid out very sim very clearly. It's got clear transitions. Um, it's easy to follow. And he takes you through what advertising is, how people have been manipulated, how a whole generation of children were, were, were made to um, want certain things. Uh, they started to bring in lots of different forms of media through television, through comic books, through um you know, to sell toys essentially is what they're trying to do. They're trying to sell toys. So they're selling us a lot of different things in order to raise interest in them. Um, there's an online um, uh, news literacy project called Checkology. It's free, but you do have to sign up for it. But they do have um, a considerable number of lessons that you can engage in and assign to your students that they can do at home, they can do on the computer. Um, having trouble getting into it because uh, because I have to sign in, but um, you know they have things about misinformation, power and art, practicing quality journalism, 
press freedoms around the world. So a lot of information. So you can pick, it, pick and choose from what they offer. Uh, it's free, as I said, and you can assign it or you can review it in class. There's lesson guides, transcripts, there's answer keys, there's posters, lots of different resources that you can use in class. Teach media literacy in your classroom through technology. And then of course, uh, media literacy in the upper grades, right? Um, here's a great book. It's called, I went to see this uh, author speak. And it's how to win the war on truth, right? An illustrated guide to how mistruths are sold, why they stick, and how to reclaim reality. It's really, it's a bit more sophisticated. It deals with concepts in more depth than um, Box Brown does in the He-Man effect. Um, he's more comprehensive. He covers the progression of um, the war on truth all the way from propaganda through um, advertising and, um, and other forms of, of of news all the way up to present day and social media. And he goes into great depth with them as well. His art is, is, he tells his information mostly through language, but he has images here that help to uh, uh, give us more information regarding what he's referring to, because of course it's all media and much of media today is, is visual. So it's really a, a well-conceived presentation. Uh, another more for advanced students, this one um, is called The Influencing Machine, and uh, it has more, I'd say, uh, I don't want to say philosophical, but a more journalistic bent on, um, and I think Brooke Black's, Badstone was, in fact, a journalist, on uh, media, and it begins with a story about The Influencing Machine, where a girl who um, broke up with a boyfriend thinks that she is still being influenced by him because he's created this machine that controls her emotions and the way she reacts to things. And so her psychologist at the time coined the term the influencing machine, and that's become sort of the name of the media. And so the, the really book that talks, uh, the book really focuses on how we are being influenced by the media, by the influencing machine, and it controls how we perceive and things that we take as as, as truths really are things that have been fed to us by the media. Well, one example would be, um, I'm not sure, I think they deal with this in this, but I know, I know Spatel might deal with it and, um, and the, how, the, how to win the war in truth is um, there's an ad in the seventies. I remember where people, there was a lot of litter. And so they had an ad with a, a Native American first people, um, crying right and uh the idea was that you know this is his land and we're ruining it and, and so um we accept that that's our responsibility right instead of saying that the companies that put out these products need to be more responsible about how what kind of materials they're using and how they're given out and how much how many they sell instead they they wanted to keep selling it but they wanted us to be more considerate about what we did with them and um and that was a truth that was sold to us through, through advertising, and public relations. And so the influencing machine, um, I would probably study it with more advanced students, honor students, say, um, just because of the uh, difficulty of some of the concepts that he, that uh, Brooke Gladstone is dealing with. But I think it's still accessible in many different ways for a lot of different grade levels. Um, some of you may like to deal more with textbooks. Um, and there's some free textbooks online. Libre Texts, for instance, offers free textbooks, including several about media resources. I actually use some of these with some of my college classes that I teach, and I use some of these with my high school students as well. And so you can go through and you can plug in just about anything you want. Here's the term media, right? And then it gives you chapters and, and different lessons, uh, different pages devoted to different elements about media literacy and media and social media and you know anything with the word media and you can get the whole book and you can download it and go through it in chapters as well um, and there's more than just one there's two or three actually that you can get from labor text um just to give you an idea of some sample lessons um with uh students in the high school for instance i'll show them this commercial which has been very hard to find now so um, when it first came out about 10 years ago, it was quite controversial. And we discussed its purpose. And, um, and remember, it's put out by Gillette and Gillette's primary job is to sell razors, right? So they're trying to make a profit. Um, but they have this really controversial commercial about um, the, from, that was influenced by the Me Too movement, right? 
And so is this commercial, is it meant to sell a product? Is, is it advancing a public relations campaign? Are they in the long haul trying to create a brand that they can then market later on? So the question is, what's going on? I'm going to play this uh, just to give you a sense of it. Against the masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? Can't hide her. Yeah. It's been going on far too long. You can't laugh at all. What I actually. Making the same old excuses. But something finally changed. No going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right way, some already are in ways big and small. But some is not enough. Treat each other okay because the boys watching today. Will be the men of tomorrow. Okay, so try and reduce this here. Um, so um, it gives. I have very strong reactions to this when I teach it in class at, at all levels, right? The high school and the college level, because some people think that it's just a, a company cashing in on the Me Too movement and throwing men under the bus. Other people think that it's um, a company that's trying to do the right thing, rise above the fray. Uh, so a lot of different views of it, exactly what their goal was. So it, it gives rise to some very good discussion. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that goes hand in hand with media literacy, of course, is visual literacy, right? Um, teaching students to question and interpret images, even at an early age, can dramatically increase their media literacy as well. Several sources that can help with this skill, even at a young age, because you think about, when I was a kid, we had three channels on television, and that was it. That was a screen we had. Computers were in their infancy, so it was pretty much just a blank screen with some words on it. Uh, and... Uh, but now, I mean, they're inundated with more images in the day than people 100 years ago would see in their entire lives. And so visual literacy today is a super resource for. For, for you know, for finding lessons about visual literacy. Sorry about that. Pause. I had something popped up on the screen. Um, and I think that they have, yes, they have teaching resources here. And so you can go through for whatever grade you are, and they can give you teaching resources. So, for instance, we look at the middle grades, middle grades to 11 to 14, right? And it gives, um, it gives you different things, creativity and education with uh, different figures uh, that uh, are working with it. Continue reading it. You can go to uh, pre-K and early years. They have some. M is from Matisse, ABCs of Art with Toledo Museum of Art. So they're giving you different resources um, that you can draw from for your own classes about visual literacy so that they can start interpreting images as well. Um, there's a sample lesson here for primary grades. It's from Edutopia to click on it because I wanted everybody to have at least some practical uh, content regarding um, media literacy and visual literacy. And so how's, here's how to incorporate visual literacy into your instructions, right? When students make observations, they learn how to describe what they see, interpret the images, and then start to make deeper connections. And the sooner they start to make those deeper connections, the easier it is for make them later. All right. Um, facilitating connections to learning with visual literacy, literacy include um, addressing six components, right? Facial expressions, focal points, gestures, clothing, setting uh, 
Um, so students have to identify where the story is taking place, objects, what are the other objects that enhance the illustrations and give clues to understanding various elements in the story, right? Uh, there's some uh, books that can focus, that you can offer to your students that focus on visual literacy, like The Flower Man. These are recommendations. I'm not familiar with these books, but they're recommend, recommending them. This is a wordless picture book. Um, and it uh, looks like the art is fabulous. That's by Mark Ludi. Um, and, um, and so that's one recommendation. Um, and so they have a whole host of things that you can work on here for, for yours, but it just gives you a lot of things that students can begin to, um, to interpret. Middle grades, right? Common core in action, 10 visual literacy stat strategies. Once again, Edutopia, super resource, finding practical um, methods and, and skills and techniques for working into your classroom. Uh, it gives you even the standards from the common core that you can um, use to account for if you need to. Um, and it gives you some videos here that uh, take you through the modeling of the different lessons that they're working with, right? Visual thinking strategies. What do you notice? What do you see that makes you say that? What can you find? So it's actually what somebody was pointing at. And it gives you some worksheets that you can create or adapt for your own class as well, right? Um, it gives you different um, um, places to analyze, such as a photo analysis, cartoon, motion picture, map, poster, a lot of different things that you can use, including video. So it's a real... Is a really good resource, right, for the middle grades. And um, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit. And then in the upper grades, I'll often show um, a video here. Um, it's, it's a very accessible video about um, visual literacy and very simple methods uh, that students can begin to interact with videos in a um, um, sensible and, and uh, critical way, right? Um, I'll often present this images connected to our topic of study. And, um, and I will get into how I use this, um, some of these questions and techniques and some of some of the content that I teach. Um, but I do want to play part of this video at least. I'm going to skip ahead, right? This flow when Morpheus is finding the matrix. If it's, um, it's the world that has been pulled over your eyes and driving you from the truth. So let's see how much of the truth that you really see, how visually literate we really are. My <laughs> two boys uh, recognize what this image meant well before they could say their own names or walls. Um, two points with this particular image. First of all, color. So much research has been done about the psychological effects of color on human behavior. Um, there's no coincidence that this is red. Food packaging, pure decorating, um, advertising, of course, red triggers appetite, triggers hunger. Um, second point in that how little of the type needs to be there for us to be able to read McDonald's. You know, closure, you put, it could have been dotted and your eyes are going to close it. How little information has to be there for us to be able to see a face or read a word. Um, and to illustrate that, I wanted to show another logo and discuss a perceptual set. Um, the idea of the perceptual set is the tendency to see something and ignore another bit of information. Sort of like the magician that I'm doing something over here, but the, the real hand has got the trick over here. Like um, negative and positive space. When you're seeing the, the faces facing each other and you don't notice the white face that's in the middle, those magic pictures that have hidden messages. Well, um, artists know how to use these ideas to embed signs, symbols, ideas that you're seeing without 
understanding that you're seeing. You're seeing a very subliminal message. So what's the um, hidden sign within the FedEx logo that helps you associate fast delivery with it? That arrow in the middle, right here between the E and the X. So whether you have recognized that before, it's always been there. Images persuade us. They're powerful. They um, make us think. Okay, and she goes on a great length. It's, it's uh, well, not great length. It's about 12 minutes long, but it's a great um, introduction to uh, the, the power of visual literacy, right? And so I'll often play this video, and then we'll look at images from World War I when we're studying in some of my English classes, all quiet in the Western Front. And so we'll take a look at this um, this poster and, and other ones from this um, from this time period. And um, excuse me, these are the four questions or the four techniques that um, the speaker just uh, that we just saw recommends. Right, look closely, dig deeper, share with a friend, and look again. And that may give rise to more questions and things that with any kind of image we want to be aware of: who made the image, what messages are being. Where was the image displayed? What emotions are being addressed? How is the viewer being manipulated? What are questions we should be asked when viewing the images, right? And this is just some of the images, right? As long as they start to question it, that's really the goal. Just not passive, but they're active in some way. Uh, that's, that's my goal. Um, and so whenever there's a photograph as well, it's not just drawn images, but photographs have power. And a lot of people think, oh, it's just a picture. What's the, you know, it's just looking at people. It's just presenting. Um, you know, a moment in time, but there's a lot more that goes on with photography than just, you know, pictures of individuals. Uh, and so uh, what is the subject of the photo? Where was the photograph taken? What equipment was used to take the photograph? You know, was it a cell phone? Was it, um, was it a, a one that had silver background and was really fancy? Um, was it a cam? Was it a, um, a, a movie projector? Is this just one from thousands of of different images that were taken. Who is viewing the photograph? Where is the photograph displayed? What is the subject meant to convey? There's a lot of different questions with a photograph that can be explored here. Because it's not just cut and, cut and dry, right? It's not just a picture of some people. There's a lot more going on with, a, with any kind of a photograph. All right, um, so this is the type of questions, but this is more of a presentation. But if you do have any questions, please contact me or Dory, my partner. Um, at the addresses here, james.saint.pierre at maine.gov or dory.trip at maine.gov. Or you can often visit, you can also visit our website, Maine Humanities, which is uh, on the Department of Education, Maine Department of Education website. Um, I, I'm a big advocate of media literacy. I hope you found this helpful and that you have several resources. So we'll have this um video uh, of this presentation on the website. I'll also link just the presentation so that you can go through and, and find the different resources and, and click on them as well. So you have both the video and the, uh, the actual you know, links from the different slides. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you. Um, take care and we'll see you, see you at our next professional development webinar.